What's going on smart people? Today's video is all about the cross product. We all have our favorite way of calculating them that we had to memorize some stuff in order to do it. Today I'm going to show you how to do it a different way, a more formal way using what's known as the Levy Savita symbol. And before we get into that, I'm going to show you the way that I learned how to do a cross product. Uh, we're going to see what we get and we're going to see that it matches up with the Levy Savita, I guess, formalism way of doing things. So uh, I'm assuming you all know what a cross product is, but just for good measure, if we have some vector A and we're crossing it with some vector B, what that gives us is a new vector C that is perpendicular to both A and B. Um, and the way that I was taught to evaluate these kinds of things is, is as a determinant. So I have my basis vectors at the top. Let's use Cartesian here, EY, EZ. And then we have the components of the vectors here, so AX, AY, AZ, BX, BY, BZ. And I was always taught to cover up the column of the, of the basis that I'm working with right now and the row of the basis vectors and then evaluate the determinant that's left over. So in this case, this would give us uh, AY, BZ minus AZ, BY and that is going to be the x component of this new vector. So that's our e sub x. And just by the way, whether if I write like e sub x, that's the same thing as x hat, that's the same thing as e sub 1, that's the same thing as i hat. I don't really care what you use to talk about your basis vectors as, lo as long as we can all agree on what is what. Especially um, when it comes to indexing with numbers, with integers, that's going to be important later on. Okay, and then I also know that uh, for some reason, there's a minus sign that comes up for the next one, and I cover up the column, cover up the row, and I get AXBZ minus AZBX, and that's going to be my E sub Y component, and so on for E sub Z. And that works. I mean, you get the right answer, but there's memorization of knowing like what to cover up, and then you tack on a minus sign, and it's it's a little weird. Uh, and there's a better way of doing this, and now we come to introducing what's known as the Levi Savita symbol. And what this what this object is, it's epsilon i j k, and it's defined to be one for cyclic permutations. What the hell does that mean? Cyclic permutations. Well, i can be one, two, or three. So i equaling 1 corresponds to the x component. i being 2 corresponds to the y component. And i equals 3 is z. Okay? So if we have i, j, k, i, j, k can all be 1, 2, or 3. So if we have i, j, k being 1, 2, 3, so i being 1, j being 2, k being 3, that's what's called a cyclic permutation, and that means this symbol here would be a 1. If you think of it this way, to where this is a 1, this finger is a 2, and this finger is a 3, we can rotate it such that the 2 becomes the new first number, in which case the next way around would be 2, 3, 1. That is also a cyclic permutation. So we would get 2, 3, 1. Likewise, we could also get 3, 1, 2. If it helps, if it's a little bit easier to think of it this way, just write 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 over and over again. This works, shift by 1. This works, shift by 1. This works, whatever helps. Uh, so if you come across any of these combinations, this symbol is 1. This symbol is minus 1 for anti-cyclic, cyclic, sorry, permutations meaning, well, if it goes backwards. So if we get 3, 2, 1, or 2, 1, 3, or 1, 3, 2. So if these are the combinations of i, j, k, this symbol is minus 1. Lastly, the symbol is 0 for anything else. Typically what this means is if any of the indices repeat, meaning if we have like 1, 1, 3, or uh, 3, 1, three or something like that. If any of them repeat, this symbol is zero. All right, and with that being said, let's define our cross product. Well, here, this whole determinant, this whole thing that's going on right here, 
is the component, it's the x component of our new vector. This is kind of similar to how we're about to define the cross product in terms of the levi civita symbol because we're gonna, de we're gonna define the component of the cross product in terms of it. So if we wanna find, here's a cross b, if we want to find the ith component of this, so if i is one, we're talking about the x component of this cross product. If we want to find the ith component of a cross b, that is defined as uh, this levi civita symbol. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space. You'll see why. Okay, so here we're keeping track of i. That's the index we care about, which means even though we have these jk's here, they have to go away at some point because our final answer just depends on i. The way of doing that is that means we're going to end up summing over j and k. So we got jk. Uh, and then it's going to be the j component of a times the k component of b, and we are summing over j and k. That is a pretty weird notation, I'll admit, but let's see, let's see what that means. So let, let's do a special case. Let's say we are interested in, say, the x component. Why not? In other words, we want to know what a cross b 1 is, so i is 1. So again, that is equal to sum over j, sum over k. These quantities all go from 1 to 3. Epsilon 1 jk, right, because we know that i is 1 now. aj bk. And now we just need to add up every possible combination of j and k. What's going to end up happening is that most of these combinations give us this result where the epsilon ijk is going to give us a zero. Most of the terms don't contribute. With this example where we're calculating e sub x, we're going to brute force our way through the entire thing and then when we calculate the next term, we're going to speed it up a little bit because we'll see what kind of symmetries there are. And we'll also make some assumptions that obviously we're going to be summing over the repeated indices and stuff like that. But let's go ahead and do this. So if we're summing over j and k, uh, that means that the possible combinations are that this is equal to, let's say, let's start with 1. 1, 1, 1. So that means j is 1 and k is 1, so that's a1, b1, because these are also j and k, plus epsilon 1, 1, 2, a1, b2, plus epsilon 1, 1, 3, a1, b3. And you see how this, this is kind of monotonous, and uh, right, now, right away we see that all of these so far have a repeated index, so they're going to go to zero. But, you know, just to be thorough, uh, plus, let's do epsilon 1, 2, 1, a2, b1, plus epsilon 1, 2, 2, a2, b2. I'm doing this in a weird order, I know, but I'm just trying to make sure I get them all. Plus epsilon uh, 1, let's say, 3, 1, uh, a3, b1, plus epsilon one, let's do two, three, a two, b three, plus epsilon one, three, two, a three, b two. How many do we have so far? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think we're missing one, which is one, one, one. This one's gonna be fun. Oh, uh plus epsilon one three three, right? Probably the one that we're missing, yeah. A three B three. Okay, so this is a lot of bookkeeping, but let's let's see what cancels. Here we have epsilon one one one. These indices cancel, so this term goes to zero. This one has repeated indices, this term goes to zero, this one goes to zero, this one goes to zero, this one goes to zero, uh, this one goes to zero. This one does not, this one does not, and this one goes to zero. So the only two surviving terms are these ones right here. And let's take a look at this. So uh, epsilon 1, 2, 3, that's a cyclic permutation. So that means that this symbol is 1. So that tells us that 
a cross b1 is equal to a2 b3, because it's 1 times that, and then we've got 1, 3, 2, so that's minus 1, so it's minus a3 b2, and just to go to the older convention where we were talking about like y's and z's and stuff like that, that tells us that uh, a cross b, the x component of this vector, is equal to a y b z minus a z b y. And if we look up here, we got a y b z minus a z b y. Perfect, it works. A lot of that was super thorough and redundant and it wasn't very necessary. That's never what I would do if I was actually using this this formalism of calculating a cross product because it's unnecessary. What I would actually do, which is what we're going to be doing for this next case, and actually before we do that, let's go ahead and distribute this minus sign that we calculated for e sub y. So this is the same thing as uh, a z b x minus a x b z. Just so that's that's gonna uh, make things a bit more clear in just a minute. So let's go ahead and calculate the y component. So what that means is we are interested in a cross b two. So that means i is two now, and we're not gonna go through all this because we know. If there were two terms that survived here, that would be really weird if there weren't just two terms that survive here. So let's go ahead and write this out. You guys already know that we're going to be summing over j and k, so that's a bit of a more cumbersome notation. So we're just going to assume that we're summing over j and k. So this is equal to epsilon 2 j k a j b k. And we know that if any of these two indices are two, the epsilon is going to go to zero, right? So let's not go through that. We're, we're smarter than that, which means that one of these has to be a one, and one of these has to be a two. Okay, so that means that this is equal to epsilon two. Let's just do a uh, three, one. Let's do that case first. So that's going to be a three b one plus epsilon two one three a1, b3. This is a cyclic permutation, so that is equal to a3, b1. This is anti-cyclic, which means that it's a minus a1, b3. In other words, that is equal to az, bx, minus ax, bz. And is that what we got up here? It sure is. Awesome. So this way, once you're comfortable with the, with the method, once you understand that you're summing over the indices that don't show up over here, and all of the terms that have common indices are going to go to zero, once you've got that down, this becomes very fast. This becomes very fast, and you don't have to memorize anything. Um, now, you might argue that you have to memorize what the levi civita symbol is, and that's true. That is true, but it is, a, it is an actual mathematical object that pops uh, into into your life more than just the cross product. This comes up in quantum mechanics quite a bit. It comes up with a lot of with a lot of tensor analysis. Uh, whereas the convention that you might be used to for just the regular cross product, that's only helpful for your definition of the cross product. It doesn't extend to anything else. So this is worth knowing because it pops up in other places. But that's going to do it for this video. I think I've talked about this enough. I hope you get the idea. Uh, maybe see for yourself if you can calculate the third component and see if you get what you would if you did it my way or your normal way of calculating the cross product. Let me know in the comments section if you found this video helpful and I'll see you guys there.